Hello, hello, everybody. It is 12.31 p.m. Central Time on the 21st of December, 2020. It's Monday here in the United States. Hope you're doing well. Man, do I have some breaking news for you uh, in the last eight hours or so. Over here in Hawaii, on the big island of Hawaii. Are you holding on to your hats? Kilauea has erupted with a noteworthy eruption. And for those of you who didn't know, we've been talking about this for the last two weeks since a new earthquake swarm has broken out on the big island of Hawaii, leading up to 4.0 plus activity at Mauna Loa and Mauna Kea, and dozens if not hundreds of small earthquakes around the Middle East Rift Zone around Kilauea itself. And the new eruption is pretty impressive. This is a picture from the eruption. So lava vents, vents again, fountains of lava. The crater lake that had formed on the inside is now gone. It's evaporated off, filling with magma or lava at the surface. This is what the crater lake used to look like, and it was actually growing in size. This is a story from MSN. Just showing again, they've got it at two to three hours ago. They're talking about this in the news. I'd like to go over to the Hawaii Volcano Observatory and just see what they've got on their website. First visit today. Ah, look, Kilauea Volcano Updates. See updates. Oh, well, they've got it at red all of a sudden. Okay, now, we have to go back again in time. I'm not going to bother reading what they've got on here. You guys can pause it and read it if you need to. It's just talking about the eruption and a 4.4 earthquake that struck right around the same time as the eruption taking place. Now, I would say the 4.4 earthquake is likely just the deformation that's happening at the surface or very close to it. The breaking that's happening through the rubble pit that was there. And to understand what happened, first we have to go back almost two years when, well, I'd say it was right around almost two years ago, when Hawaii drained out here on the Big Island, over here at Kilauea, there used to be a lava lake up at the surface, pretty impressive looking, and it was right here where they have the pool of water. Now what happened was the lava lake had actually drained out and left an open tube in the ground several hundred if not a thousand feet wide and thousands of feet deep. And it couldn't hold its own weight on the sides since the magma was actually supporting it up in the tube. And the tube collapsed as well, and the top of the magma chamber collapsed and formed a big rubble pit in the ground. Now that's just where it started. Then the collapsing carried on, and you can see the edges that collapsed here all the way out to the right-hand side or east side and over to the west side. This was all level when this started, two years ago about, and it collapsed and subsided all the way down a few thousand feet at the center and around the edges. The whole caldera basically shifted down, and the area around it went down as the magma drained down and out way over here on the side of the Middle East Rift Zone. Now, I'm going to bring this in at an angle to show you the Middle East Rift Zone and tell you why I was talking about it over the past couple weeks. So, an earthquake swarm started here at the base of Mauna Loa. Notice how Mauna Loa is up above Kilauea here. And notice how Mauna Kea is up above Mauna Loa, really. And the swarm started here, went down to the coast, right across the Middle East Rift Zone. This is Hawaii Volcanoes National Park right in here, right up at the top where all the trees are. And the magma that fills the chamber goes down at least a few miles or at least a few thousand feet, several thousand feet down below. And the magma chamber started to refill back up over the past year or so. Now, in the past couple weeks, the swarm broke out, which led me to openly postulate about the magma chamber reaching its limit. The reason I thought it had reached its limit was a series of other noteworthy sized earthquakes started to break out at the other volcanoes up above Kilauea. Again, you have to understand that Kilauea is really technically at the base of Mauna Loa here. And Mauna Loa is the biggest shield volcano on the planet, at least on the surface, not counting undersea volcanoes. So this thing started to rise first, then a 4.1 earthquake struck at Mauna Loa, and then within a few days, a 4.1 earthquake struck up here at Mauna Kea, and it was going all the way around the Big Island, all the way down here out to sea, right to the north side of Loihi, the undersea volcano out here offshore. So we had earthquakes here at Loihi, earthquakes at Kilauea, earthquakes at Mauna Loa, earthquakes at Mauna Kea, and a ring of quakes around the Middle East Rift Zone, leading me to postulate that it had reached its limit and it was likely going to be doing something pretty soon. 
Now, I then went on to talk about how the professionals would get some kind of tilt meter notices or sulfur dioxide notices, and apparently some of those did come in, but they didn't put out some kind of big warning in the news like you think they would. So here we have me, over the past couple of weeks, putting out warnings and notices telling people in Hawaii to pay attention to what's going on here. And then, at the same time I made my videos over the past couple of weeks, the USGS came out and issued a statement about the earthquakes that I was talking about in my video. And they said that there was talk online. Well, there wasn't much talk online except for, for me, I think. But they said the swarm of threes didn't mean anything, basically. You read their article and what they said two weeks ago. They're like, oh, it's just a swarm going up to threes. They put out the article the next morning after they put out the article saying it was just threes and basically meant nothing. That's when the first 4.1 struck at the top of Mauna Loa. This is all in the past week and a half, two weeks. So, let's recap again. We start seeing a bunch of earthquakes around here. It starts becoming a topic of discussion in my videos. Then the USGS comes out, tries to downplay it. The next day, after downplaying it, a 4.1 earthquake strikes at Mauna Loa, which is pretty rare. Then, a couple days after that, a 4.1 earthquake struck at Mauna Kea. That's two 4.1 earthquakes striking at two of the other volcanoes on the big island, indicating that the magma chamber at the Middle East Rift Zone was pushing up and out to the other volcanoes, proving they're somewhat connected seismically speaking too, which is a huge discovery. So now it's erupted. And I do want to go back and just take a look at their multimedia page and just see if they have any pictures of this event taking place. Uh, again, guys, look, we're, we're doing the filter. Let's just make sure that we've got the right year selected, I guess. <laughs> you think they would have it up front, top, and center on the multimedia. Man, I'll tell you what. Let's go to the webcams, see what they've got there. Well, look at this. Let's just take a look and see what we have. Do they have the animation? Oh, man, their site is running really, really, really low. There it is. There we do. We do have an updated picture. Let me click on it, see if we can get a bigger shot of it. Oh, boy. I, live thermal image of Hale Mau Mau. There it is. Now, it's a small picture. I guess clicking on it is taking me over to a different view. That's, that's odd. Let's go to the webcam and see if the webcam's even working. These are all live. Okay, so this is a shot, but man, that, <laughs> that is the tiniest little image. Let me try and blow it up. Obviously, they're throttling. They need to have a cloud at this point. Can I get an amen to that? Stop trying to use their own servers and just put it on a dang cloud or on social media. But there it is. There's the vent, and this is a fountain that has now filled in the crater, and it's going to keep filling. It will keep filling, for a while at least. Now, it could stop any time now that it would reach maybe up to where the vent is. I don't know how much higher or lower than the, than the vent it will go. Again, this is uncharted waters for me and for all of us, really, because this happened. The last this really happened was like 200 years ago when the last collapse happened at the last caldera, and it shifted slightly, the lava lake. But now the lava lake's coming up inside of here, which is actually comforting to know that the blowout happened here, and it's not happening around the park. You have to go back a year, a year and a half, after it stopped, the lava flow went on for months and months. But when it stopped, we all, including the professionals, were wondering, is it going to blow out of the top, or is it going to blow out the side when it refills? That was pretty much the question. And the reason I was asking that question is there's a string of previous blast craters, and then calderas as well, but mainly craters. Like, here's an old caldera. But then there's craters where there are blasts. So it makes you wonder, is there going to be a blast or is there going to be a collapse? And now what we have inside of the previous collapse, inside of the rubble pit, which is what I talked about a year and a half ago, that it made sense to me that it would probably come up through the rubble. Because that's a weaker break point, as opposed to punching up through the crust around it. Well, now we know. It came up through the rubble. Now you have a filling lava lake inside of Kilauea, after about a year and, what, year and nine months or something? Almost two years. And I'll, I'll say it. The signs were there. I can't believe that it would take a person like me with a high school diploma to come out and talk about the logic behind why we would think Kilauea is reinflating 
over the past week with all the earthquake activity spreading out around the Middle East Rift Zone. Again, those earthquakes matched almost perfectly to the area around the Middle East Rift Zone. Even right now, you can even see it in the past two days. Let's look at the last week. Do you see this? Do you see how it makes, like you can play a game of connected dots all the way around the north side of Mauna Loa, back around the southwest side, and back down around. There's only a few oddballs on either side, and that's going up to the other volcanoes, going up to Mauna Kea and down to Lo'ihi. So the big ring is around the Middle East Rift Zone, which is right in the middle, on the side, east side, or the east-southeast side of Mauna Loa. One more time. There's Mauna Loa. Here's Kilauea. Here's the Middle East Rift Zone right through here, going all the way through the park. And now it's blown. And it's rare. Again, this is a 200-year a event that no one really has any idea of what's going to happen. And I'm just going with what to me is the most logical based upon the seismic activity that's showing up around the areas. This should be assigned to everybody. When you start seeing a bunch of earthquakes around a volcano, pay attention to the volcano. Don't just dismiss them and say they don't mean anything. Professionals, especially the USGS Hawaii Volcanoes Observatory, now, tongue-in-cheek, I'm joking around a little bit. I'm like, I hate to say I told you so, and I was laughing and joking about it. Nobody got hurt. So, no one got hurt. That's the good news. The other good news is this is the egg on the face of the professionals that needs to happen in order for them to move forward in science. The embarrassment of being behind the times, being behind a YouTube video maker, <laughs> is something that I think would drive a professional crazy who went to school for 20 years and spent their whole life trying to do this. That for me, it's just a hobby. It's something that I just do on my own I, as with no, again, no professionalism in it at all. I'm just telling you what I see and what I think is happening. And I would encourage more professionals to do that, to go out on a limb and be wrong, to, to take the attempt to tell people what you think is going on, even if you could be wrong. As a matter of fact, I would even think people would respect you more as a professional if you were wrong more than you were right. And you're like, look, and you admitted it too. You're like, oh, I was wrong here, and I was wrong here, and I was wrong here. And then finally, look, I, I, we looked at this, and now it makes sense. We file this away for future events in Hawaii. That this is, again, a sign that something was getting ready to happen over the past two weeks. And if you live on the big island, you got a two-week warning from Mother Nature that something was getting ready to happen. Now, did you get a two-week warning from your professionals? You got a two-week warning from me, and the only reason you got it from me is because Mother Nature let me know what was going on. Or whatever you want to call it. The world let me know what was happening here just by the earthquakes that was taking place around the Middle East Rift Zone. So it's kind of a no-brainer. A bunch of earthquakes around a magmatic chamber that previously collapsed within the past year and a half to two years. And it's refilling. We know it's refilling because it's supposed to refill. It's never going to sit there empty. And we see a bunch of deep earthquakes that stopped, start to pop off and then stop. So they started and then they stopped. But now here we are again and we have a new round of deep earthquakes taking place, which gets me into the rest of this update. We have a new deep five point something earthquake right here. And it's down at, let's see, let's get the, the depth on this. Well, first of all, we have a shallow 5.7 next to it, but I'm concerned with the deep one at 463 kilometers deep raised high off the globe here. Now, this earthquake, this deep five, can lead to a shallower, larger earthquake, and it did, seven hours later. First this one, 10 o'clock, UTC time, and then by 1,700 hours, seven hours later, a shallower, larger earthquake pops up right next to it. Yesterday, when I did my update yesterday, this was the open silent zone, and I talked about this, New Caledonia, at the U-shaped bend, and mentioned that it was an open area that was going to be filled in by a larger earthquake than what was on both sides. And what was on both sides? A 5.1 on one side, you see it marked in pink here, and a 5.2 on the other. Now guess what? If you take a 5.2 plus a 5.1, guess what it equals? 5.3. And right in the middle, that 5.3, again, let's wait for it, right here, struck last night, filling in the middle open silent zone. Now the middle of the middle just got struck by a 5.7. Let me show you the middle of the middle on the USGS plate boundary map. Over here. See the big cluster of quakes? So, uh, once again, we have a 5.1 on one side over here. And we have a 5.2 on the other side over here. And in the middle, the 5.3 struck. Then, the middle point of the middle point just got filled in with a 5.7. And the middle point going up and around the bend this way. 
So first the middle point got filled in here, then it adjusted out, and a new middle point was filled in between the other previous sets of fives. So middle point upon middle point, the equal spacing is perfect going across the region if you follow the red lines of the plate boundary, like a wave tank. Now we do have a new earthquake right here. A new five has just struck in Philippines. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. A 4.9. That's right, folks. A 4.9 has struck over here in the Philippines on top of the other 4.9 that just struck last night, yesterday. Sure is a lot of 4.9 and going on across Philippines, Japan, the Izu Ridge. It's all like 4.9s, and I'm not exaggerating. 4.9 there, 4.9 there, 4.8 here, 4.8 and 4.9 here, 4.8 and 4.9 up here. That's a lot of the same sized earthquakes. The whole region is shifting on a 5.0 basis. And when I say the whole region, I mean it. It's up across Philippines, up into Japan, back down across the Izu Ridge, back down to Papua New Guinea. All of this, 4.8, 4.9 in the last day and a half, two days. And now we just have a new 4.9 that just struck right in the middle as I'm here talking. Let's just find out what time that struck because that's like a recent earthquake here. 4.9 at... 1814 UTC. The last 30 minutes that 4.9 struck. Okay. Up to the north, it's gone completely quiet. The pink earthquakes here are from yesterday. Here's today's quakes up in Japan. Nothing, right? We have to go up into Russia, into Kamchatka to get a 4.5. That's a drop off from where we were. I would call this like a surfing analogy. We are between waves right now. Between waves. So we had a swell come in a day ago with the six in Japan. Now, we're waiting for the next swell to come in. And the whole region of the south is all 4.8 and 4.9 in, plus a new set of deep earthquakes down below the plate. Now, for if you're new here, let me explain the deep earthquakes. What I think is going on down below the plate, this series of standing waves that are forming and forming in on each other in a concentric wave that can't compress down into the fluid of the magma. So it spikes up and puts the combined force of the whole deep earthquake up into the plate from the underside from the magma and it's hammering up into the underside of the plate like a jackhammer and it's the combined force of hundreds if not thousands of miles of hammering action up on the underside of the red lines here so that hammering action that I just showed you in the concentric wave tank hammering in on the underside of the plate across hundreds if not thousands of miles now where's the concentric wave coming from it's coming up out of the magma which means the magma is being perturbed by something. Something greater down in the core of the Earth. Coming up. Very low frequency. Okay, so. Hammering action spreads out. Once it hits the underside of the plate, this giant spike of all the combined force of the wave, it then spreads out through the plate. Following those red lines that I've been showing you since the start of the update. Following the plate boundaries. Like a wave tank. So, imagine these red lines on the map here. Like the wave tank in the laboratory containing the wave and the wave spreads out across the whole tank and drops off same size to earthquakes either at the peak or the trough or the valley the bottom of the wave or the top of the wave or anywhere along the curve from the top to the bottom but I would think it's either at the top or the bottom and we're getting same sized earthquakes spreading out across whole regions just like waves in a wave tank standing waves in a wave tank so far the new push has reached up into Philippines all in the five range now this is all going to combine and go up into Japan again. And it's going to strike the new middle point between the previous sets of earthquakes. And look how many there are. So there's at least one at Taiwan, one in South Japan, one on the coast of Northeast Japan, and one up at Hokkaido. That's four earthquakes that should strike. Each middle point between our sets of quakes should get filled in. And I'm counting at least four. One, two, three, four. This one right here in the middle is where they all overlap. That's on the most famous earthquake zone on the planet, the coast of Honshu, northeast of Tokyo. So they're due for four quakes that are bigger than these 4.9s. The combined total of all the 4.9s is, is going to combine and go up into Japan again and strike at the middle point. It's going to combine on both sides of the plate boundary and go up to the letter H shape bend in the plate. Now, the halfway points from Taiwan, South Japan, coast of Honshu, up to Hokkaido, all are going to be filled in by larger earthquakes than what are here right now. Larger than the 4.9s. As we go over to the west, we go quiet across western Indonesia. One lone earthquake up here next to Mount Sinabung. 
But the rest of the activity, let's go look at the volcanoes really quick. I mean, come on, the <laughs> Kilauea is blowing, so we just have to go quickly check and go see if there's anything else going on volcanically. I heard Rupahu, or I can't pronounce it, down in New Zealand has had the alert level raised over at it. But let's just go take a look. Sakurajima blowing in South Japan, Sabankaya going in Peru, Fuego in Guatemala, Popocate Batal, Kilauea, there it is, steam and gas. Look, it, it's not every day you're going to get Kilauea on the Volcanic Ash Advisory Center. But their remark is no volcanic ash is observed, it's steam. And we wouldn't expect big volcanic ash unless there's a huge blast. Those lava fountains are just going to be making a little bit of smoke and steam, not much ash. But if it blows, if there's a huge blast that somehow happened, let's just say that this is a pinhole prick in the top of the magma chamber, and I'm wrong, and it's not just going to be some kind of lava fountain. Look at this stuff on the... Look! What? Dude! Okay. Look at the ad on the side of that. Just, you got to be kidding me. Ha! All right. We're, we're going back over. Let's go back to the Volcanic Ash Advisory Center list just really quick one more time. So, Mount Etna in South Italy... Kluchevskoy, Sabankaya, Kilauea. Wait, wait. Hold on, there was a... It, hold on, I didn't know this. I just found something out about this. It's not in the stories. Not in any of the mainstream media stories. There was a flight level 300 volcanic ash cloud observed up to 40 nautical miles south-southwest from the summit area. A volcanic ash cloud flight level 300 detected on local radar. Well, I mean, it, okay, so it's confirmed. There was a 30,000-foot-high blast that accompanied this. Now, they don't have any more warnings going for it, so I guess it blew up and went out down into a non-flight zone out in the middle of the ocean. Okay, so when it blew, when, when it blew, it did send off a 30,000-foot-high blast. My God. That is a huge deal, guys. So it's not like it's just a lava vent like I thought. So there was a big blast out of the center of this thing. Oh, thank God it went out into the ocean. Oh my God. If it would have... You guys got so lucky on this because of the time of year that this is happening. Happening. If this would have just been a few months later, it would have blown right over to, over to you. That's amazing. Oh, talk about luck. Well, hey, 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 look. People in Hawaii, okay, you guys got, got some good luck going for you out there right now. All right, getting back to it. Now we've seen the list. There's no new additions to the list except for Kilauea. Now let's show you down in New Zealand where Rupahu... <laughs> I can't pronounce it. Let's go down and just pull the name and you guys could try and do it probably better than I can. I could probably go look it up, but what's the point? There it is. Rupahu. Ruapahu. Don't try to correct me. Don't try to tell me. Ruapahu is one of New Zealand's most active volcanoes. Let's just get that out of the way right off the bat. It's a complex stratovolcano constructed during at least four cone-building episodes dating back about 200,000 years ago. Sounds so much more believable when you say it like that. All right, now, so the middle point there, in the middle between our previous sets of earthquakes, is now under stress. Look where the rings overlap. Between our five up in the Kermadex, or is that our six? Between our five up in the Kermadex and a 4.5 down at, well, let's see, that's north north of Christchurch. Okay, uh, so anyway, where the rings overlap, right on the volcano on the North Island. One more time, look where the volcano is. It's south of Topo. Oh, and by the way, the, the area down here, Kaikoura, it, the location is just south of Kaikoura, just north of Christchurch. So it's not technically a Kaikoura, the 4.5. Now let's go further over to the west. Now that we've got the volcanoes out of the way, we've got the deep earthquakes out of the way, we've got the alert level in New Zealand out of the way, and Kilauea out of the way, we're going to go over into China where there's nothing to report. Another day. Now this is getting really weird because we're going days and days on end without anything reported out of China and Russia. Weird, right? But then we go right to the border and we pick back up with the reporting of earthquakes. And I mean right at the border of Afghanistan. Iran is even showing up on the list. And it's all 4.3s. 4.3, 4.3 on both sides of Iran. In the middle of 4.1 to 4.2. But I mean, I would call that about the same sized earthquake. Over to the west into Greece, another 4.3. 
So it's the same size energy going across. Again, look, 4.3, 4.3. This isn't me just selecting 4.3s. I've got the 0.0, .0 and greater feet turned on. 4.3 in the middle of 4.2 that they downgraded to 4.1. Another 4.3 over in Turkey. It's all 4.3s in the last two days across the whole region. And the whole region is bisected by the plate boundary. Let's get back over and show all the new viewers this plate boundary that goes through Iran over into Europe. And look where it goes. It goes back over into Afghanistan, Pakistan, back across over into Nepal. And 4.3 here, 4.3 here, 4.3 here, 4.3 here, 4.3 here, all the way across. How much energy do you think it would take to actually displace all of the Middle East on a 4.3 basis in a day? It would take a lot of energy. It's not just a little bit. Now let's talk about this. A new 4.0 earthquake has struck in Poland on top of yesterday's 3.5. Additionally, a new mid-range 3 struck down here right next to Campo Basso, right on the plate boundary in South Italy. Let me show you where both of these are. Campo Basso is on the plate boundary. Right down here, South Italy, South Central Italy, mid-range 3 comes rolling in. But Poland, you'll see up here we have an arrow. And uh, look at my other earthquake reported out here. I shouldn't say my. People think I made it. Look at the other earthquake reported out here off the east coast of the UK, Brits, North Sea. And we go back all the way to Romania. It's a spread of threes going across all of Europe. Romania 3.3, Italy 3.3, Italy 3.6. Up to the north, we're at a 3.9 in Poland, 3.1 off the coast of UK. And X marks the spot, 3 and a 3.3. Iceland, 3. It's all threes going all the way across the plate. And the newest earthquake is this new 3.3 that struck. I, I didn't mention the 3.6. There's an additional 3.6 on the plate boundary at central Italy from last night. So another way to look at it, everything from Iceland down to the Azores, back to the UK, over to Poland, back down through Romania. It's a perfect match. UK, Poland, Romania. Look at the arrows. Going right out to our X. Same within Central and South Europe into the Mediterranean. Going down across the eastern side of Spain. Pooling up down at the Straits of Gibraltar. Yesterday's 3.0 activity down at the Canaries. Now today's 3.0 activity out at our letter X at the Azores. If you're keeping track, you can just go watch my update from yesterday to hear me talk about all those locations that I just named. I even brought up Southern Africa last night at 3.6 because it was about the same size as the Canaries, and we talked about it basically spreading out across the whole planet. Central and South America, let's just quickly cover this. North Peru, right at the Ecuador border, the area that I talked about yesterday in yesterday's update that was open, has now been filled perfectly in by the same-sized earthquake that struck down to the south. What do we have down to the south? A 4? Up to the north, we have a 4.5. Further down to the south, we have a 4.3 and a 4.4. The spacing again. The equal spacing, like waves in the wave tank, standing waves spreading out across the region. But in this case, the wave tank is, the red line, going across South America. And right here in the middle, where there's a big open area, we have an erupting volcano, Sabancaya volcano erupting right here, that fills in that middle point going all the way down. If we go all the way up, you'll see another equal spacing of same-sized earthquakes that were yesterday. These three pink earthquakes that overlap with one another. That was yesterday. Now spreading out from them, going down to the south, you see it. Up to the north, Central America. It's all pooling up down in Central and South Mexico, going right up to the border of Guatemala. In Guatemala, Fuego Volcanoes erupting. Another way to look at it on the USGS map here. We have a bunch of earthquakes across Mexico right along the coast, going right down to the border of Guatemala. Now look what begins in Guatemala. The plate boundary for the Caribbean plate. And we have Fuego Volcano erupting right at the mouth of that. So like a river, it's the volcanoes right at the top of it, or the start of it. The flow goes out over to the east. And we're expecting that to go all the way over. I talked about this yesterday, that if I'm wrong, and the earthquake does not strike out at the edge of the Caribbean, It'll be striking back here in Puerto Rico, and I don't want to be wrong. Now, letting us know that something's coming across right now, 
Haiti and Dominican Republic were both struck by small earthquake activity. It's just both in the two range. But something's coming across. Let me show it to you this way. Something striking here in Haiti, here in Dominican Republic, a swarm in Puerto Rico, and I'm looking for something out here on the east side. And energy is coming across. Again, we got volcanoes erupting here, a bunch of earthquakes back up behind it, and this is the flow out like a river. Okay, uh, one moment, hold on. Okay, sorry about that. Now let's get into the continental United States. So, continental U.S. Again, let's just quickly recap. Hawaii blue. Hawaii blue, guys. 30,000 foot high blast, which is not in the news reports. You have to go over and actually go to the Volcanic Ash Advisory Center to see that. USGS playing dumb for the last two weeks. Acting like nothing's going on there. And I'm the only one on the planet, aside from maybe one guy in Hawaii who's actually driving out there and talking about it. Now, it's obvious. The seismic that shows up at a volcano before it erupts should not be ignored and should be talked about and told to the people that live there. Now, like, up into Alaska, 4.7, coming in right at the Aleutian Island chain, and then a 4.3 actually over in Canada of all places, which is pretty rare for us to get earthquakes reported out of Canada at all. But man, it's right on the edge of the Craton. Look at the edge of the Craton that goes up through Canada. Do you see where it goes? It goes right along the mountain ranges. And you can see the mountain ranges just really dictate the edge of the Craton. The folds and bends that go down through Vancouver, or down through BC, I mean, and down through British Columbia and over into Alberta. So four is coming into the plate. And really, this just jumped off the ramp. Look at it like this. The energy coming across the Aleutian Island chain, going up into Alaska, jumps up into the plate, and the plate absorbs it and tries to take it down along the edge of the craton. So now that a new four has struck up in Canada, guess what's going to increase down here on the edge of the craton in the United States? Earthquakes. Yellowstone's going to flare back up. Idaho will flare back up. Montana will flare back up. The number of earthquakes will increase, coming in from the northwest edge of the craton. Now let's go in and take a look. Go see what's happened in the continental United States in the last day since doing my update. This is 24 hours worth of earthquakes we're getting ready to see now. So it's going to actually remove a few off the list. Let's hit refresh. There we go. And there's 24 hours. So Idaho, expect the number of earthquakes and the magnitudes to take a full magnitude step up. Could go up as high as 4-ish, maybe even larger, but I'll put it at a 4 cap, 4.0 range, in central Idaho. We'll warn Yellowstone for a swarm outbreak. You'll notice there's no earthquakes reported today out of Yellowstone yet in the last 24 hours. They have hundreds if not thousands of tremors per day at Yellowstone. That's regular. But I'm not talking tremors. I'm talking earthquakes, breaks in the plate, fractures in the crust. And you'll notice, again, they don't have any earthquakes reported today. So that's going to flare up. Over to the west, I would expect an increase back at Mount St. Helens and Mount Rainier. Maybe even at other volcanoes. But we already have two earthquakes right below the crater of Mount Rainier. Ashford, Washington, they're two small quakes. But I would expect the number of earthquakes, the frequency, and the power behind them, the magnitude, the amplitude, to go up. So we're going to see an increase in magnitudes. We're going to see an increase in the number of earthquakes hitting at these volcanoes. Look where we are. We are right below the place mark for Mount Rainier from the Smithsonian. And again, this is the crater. Oh, wow. What? A, wait. What is this? What is that? When was this in imagery date? I don't recall seeing this before. Did they update the imagery? What the heck? Look what's going across the top of the crater. It... Look, I've zoomed in on this a bunch of times before. We've zoomed in on this many times. They must have updated the imagery here on Mount Rainier. And look what we have up at the top. A giant fissure. Whew. What date was this on? Do I even have that? I don't, we don't have the imagery date. on It says 2020 updated from Google. Wow. Well, 
That's interesting. <laughs> All right, uh, moving on. I, I'm not trying to create any problems or anything. It, it, it doesn't mean that it's going to erupt. It just means there's some kind of crack at the top. Maybe I've just missed that the whole time. But it looks somewhat fresh through the snow, wouldn't you say? Let's move on. Amboy. What's down at Amboy? Well, we got a road and a few other things here nearby. An old hotspot. When did this happen? From September 10th. We're on the southwest flank or southwest side of Mount St. Helens. I would say we're far enough away from Mount St. Helens that we should look for other nearby volcanoes. For instance, West Crater is closer than Mount St. Helens. And that's a lava flow, by the way, that came out of there. And it goes back up to the top to West Crater here. Okay, well, that's also interesting. So we have one that's right below the crater of Mount Rainier that has a crack in it now that I can see, at least on Google Earth imagery. The other is coming in next to West Crater, southwest of Mount St. Helens. Is that some kind of explosion or something? No. 20 kilometer depth. We have to check and make sure these aren't some kind of blasts that are taking place, especially now in light of what's going on in Hawaii. Let's go over to the east and see this 1.0. Benton City, Washington. Okay, this is a spot we haven't had to look up in months. I've had to look it up before, but it's been months, so I don't really remember what's there. Let's go see. Benton. Benton City. What's this? Chandler Butte. Not even marked? What? They got radio towers up on top of Chandler Butte. Look at that microwave dish tower right there. And we do have tuftage and basalt on the top of it, but it's not marked as a volcano. Interesting. Well, you know what this is right next to? Gravity Hill. Right through here. And Gravity Hill is really just gets a slang name. Or, or wait, wait, where is Gravity Hill? Is it next to Prosser? It's somewhere right near. It kind of doesn't matter. This is the Hanford Nuclear Waste Storage Facility. And these are all the old experimental nuclear reactors. They disassembled and left the caskets on there. B reactor, for instance. And the LIGO gravity wave sensing station here. With its long lasers that detect the gravity waves. So it's ironic they have Gravity Hill, which predates LIGO's gravity wave sensing station. And Gravity Hill is a spot where they say that your car rolls uphill. And skeptics say it's just due to the sloping of the ground on either side of the road and it just gives an optical illusion like you're rolling uphill and well, never mind all that they built the gravity wave sensing station right next to gravity hill which itself is pointed at the most heaviest elements known to man on the periodic chart all stored in one spot hey how about no earthquakes reported in oregon again that's just that's just getting weird they're weird they're weird up there No offense, you know. Hey, I'm weird too, you know, but not like that. I wear vaporwave clothes, matching outfits and stuff. That, I, I'm that kind of weird. But up here, they're the kind of weird that doesn't report earthquakes unless you say something and complain about it. Now, we'll go here into Northern California where they don't have a problem with reporting earthquakes. And we'll go take a look and see what's there at Shingletown. Now, this takes me into yesterday's update, really, because this is the same spot that we showed yesterday. Shingletown, California. Right next to La Tour Butte. There's Snow Mountain, Silver Lake, McGee Peak, La Tour Butte. Smithsonian Mark, Pleistocene Volcano. Andesitic Lava Cone. One to two million years ago. Is this a road or is this a set of power lines here? Or is this a pipeline? Well, there's a road, so you can see that's not a road. This is something else, some kind of clearing. And I'm looking for power lines, but I don't see any. So if we have a clearing that doesn't have power lines on it, but it goes on for miles on end, and it's not a road, guess what it is? It's a pipeline then. Or it could be buried power lines, but they don't normally bury high voltage transmission lines. So you would look in and try and find your pipelines through the area. Find the substations that power them. Yeah, right there. Yep, pipeline. And they have these spots where they can go in and shut off or in case of emergency, and you'll find the pipeline has spots where the roads cross, and they'll put 
markers along where the roads are. So let's just go see if they have markers here indicating a pipeline. Yeah, there we go. There's the markers indicating the pipeline. And I actually, the yellow is certainly, yeah. See, it says petroleum. Well, you, you can't really see that. It says petroleum. Petroleum pipeline. So that's oil. Some kind of oil. Black gold. All right. And it, you know what? They take that pipeline right through the volcanic field. Let's see where it goes. Across the lake? Really? Yeah. Is that an oil sheen coming off of that going into the lake? I hope not. Yeah, there's the pipeline right there. There, you can see it. Goes back into the ground. Let's see. Where's this thing going? Just keeps going. Oh, look, look, it goes through the lava field. This is these are this is the lava field right here. Lava Spring State Park. It goes right next to Timbered Crater and keeps going. And keeps going. Is this going up to like Canada or something? Anyway. It's going up to Oregon. Let's go down to the south where we have a lone 0, 0.0 and then a cluster of earthquakes over to the east of it. As a matter of fact, let's just pull the cluster of earthquakes and then look between Lake Tahoe and Pyramid Lake. This all happened since yesterday. A cluster outbreak at Fernley, Nevada, up near the surface, 0 0.4 kilometers deep. So this is pretty close to the surface. A surface quake, if you will. What's there? Take a look. Look where we're going. I'm serious. Look where we are. Black Butte Volcano on the edge of a geothermal and solar electrical generating operation. These are all solar panels. These are geothermal pumps. There's the volcano and the earthquakes right across the road from it. We also have railroad here. We also have power lines here. And I'm wondering what this is. Ah, oh, the geothermal pipeline. This is the drill point for the geothermal. We can follow the pipeline on the surface, carrying the steam, likely back over to a geothermal. Well, let's see. Did they go over? Yeah, yeah, here we go. Here's more of them. And follow the pipeline over to the east. And they should go right back to the station to pump, to turn the turbines. Okay, so we're right next to the geothermal drill point. There's a swarm there now. The other earthquake is right over here next to this giant oval shape. The giant oval shape is in between Lake Tahoe and Pyramid Lake, and it has geothermal fields on both sides of it. Up here, the needles at Pyramid Lake, the geyser field and small volcanoes that go down into the lake. And down here on the south side, Steamboat Springs. But I actually want to pull the coordinates on the zero. I know it's just a zero, but it's in the east side, middle east side of the giant oval, which I think is a caldera of an ancient supervolcano as yet undiscovered by professionals. Yeah, we're right next to Sugarloaf Peak Butte. Casimirio, one of my viewers, lives like right out here. You got an earthquake right next to you, bro. But really, it's next to the super volcano, the caldera. Which it's lined with volcanoes and gets hit with earthquakes around the outside edge and in the middle. Over to the west. Let's go pull the coordinates on this. Cobb, California. Wait a second, let's pull the coordinates again. The geysers. Depending on which earthquake you click on, one will tell you what's there. The other does not. Cobbs? No, there's no cobs there. There are geysers here at this geyser field at Geyserville, California, on the side of Clear Lake Volcano. Here. Another ancient volcano that's been drilled into. Take a look. Drilled into this thing to get steam to turn the turbines. To provide electrical power to the power to the area and the earthquake is coming in next to another geothermal drill point and i mean right next to it these spots where they drilled in to the volcanic field to get the steam as we go further to the south we have another little outbreak i wouldn't call it a swarm but it certainly is an outbreak in the bay area next to the hayward fault let's go pull the coordinates i think we're back at the spot we were at yesterday but the only way to find out for sure is to look it up. Yeah, a rolling wood. I think that was the location from yesterday. So it's really, I guess, just carrying on from yesterday. So let's put the coordinates in and show you what's there. 
We looked this up yesterday. We're right on the Hayward Fault. <clears throat> there we go. Directly on the Hayward Fault. We're also at a landfill. And it makes you wonder. It really does. Makes you wonder. Methane, landfill, Hayward Fault, shifting, breaking. But the fault is what I would lean that to. Over to the east, we have a power station, but it's far enough away. We got hit at this power station right across the road, right over here. Like two weeks ago, an outbreak right below this tower. That's why I marked it. But now, I, again, we're on the fault. I don't see anything else there, but I could be missing something. If you guys know of something, leave a comment down below when I save this over on YouTube. If you guys know about anything here. I mean, like what if there's an old mine here or something? major whatever it is uh, what is this a cemetery oh no not again uh oh oh I got a cat meowing okay now let's carry on from the cemetery and go down to the east southeast we're next to Monterey Bay 1.8 2.2 1.1 all three are directly on the San Andreas so I don't even need to go look them up, but I will pull the middle quake just to show you the San Andreas. We'll turn on the USGS plate boundary map again, tectonic plates and US faults. The thick red line is the San Andreas. And, oh, well, really we're on a fault a mile to the east of the San Andreas. I don't know the name of it. Oh boy, okay, I need to find out. I'm just that retentive. I need to find out the name of it so I can know. Hold on right here the sergeant fault zone northwestern section of the sergeant fault and there's the san andreas okay again i just want to know for my own sake in case anything happens there the whole area is shifting going from the volcano down past the bay area at the hayward fault down to the creeping section of the san andreas same time that's shifting and it's not that great of shifting it's just all in the two range basically over to the east, the same sized earthquakes, zeros, ones, and twos, striking over next to the geothermal pumping operations. We go back up to the north, one quake, before we get to complete radio silence out of Oregon. The volcanoes up to the north getting hit, and over next to the LIGO gravity wave sensing station getting hit. Over at the California-Nevada border, this gets fairly easy. All of these earthquakes here, going from the 1.5, across to the little swarm of zeros, over to the big stack, spread around a super volcano called Long Valley Caldera, going over to Monte Cristo Hills Volcanic Buttes with this line of quakes. And the line of quakes points back to the super volcano. Let me just show it all to you over on Google Earth. And I show this in almost every update, so it's like getting kind of old for me, but for new people, there's a line of quakes going from here all the way back down, pointing to this. The other giant oval shape, and I don't have to guess if this is a supervolcano. It has a thousand cubic kilometers of melt measured down below, confirming it as such. In the middle of it, they drilled in to get steam. And that's where the little outbreak's taking place, next to the geothermal turbines in the middle of the caldera. Then we go to the border, and we're at Mono Lake, and we jump across over to Monte Cristo Hills Volcanic Center. Border, Mono Lake. Oh, wait, let me turn the borders back on. Here's the border, here's Mono Lake, the other earthquake right next to it, and then that big line going all the way across here. And that big line of quakes mimics where the crack in the ground formed that was a 12-mile-long surface fissure fracture, which formed right here. Now, I was contacted by people who wanted to let me know something was over here to the east that I had never pointed out. Well, I never saw it. I think Google updated their imagery recently. Because now, over here, just to the east of Monte Cristo, look at the giant power generating station that's here. These are all mirrors that point in at a center boiling point. That center boiling point creates that steam, which then turns the turbines and provides major power for the area. Now, what are the chances? I'm serious, guys. Now that this is updated, and you can see this giant power generating station over on the east side of Monte Cristo Hills. And this is the spot right here where we get our 6.5 earthquake and outbreak next to the giant power generating station that's massive. I'm going to say it. It's related. 
And it just now, I'm just now noticing because of the big solar farm that's right there. And the station is putting out power and likely the power lines are going along these areas too. And I'm just not seeing those yet. I didn't look for them close enough. Nonetheless, out here at the tip, another way to look at it, the power station is right here. No exaggeration. On the backside of our arrow perfectly. Again, the arrow comes over and goes right in through here. And that's where the power station is. Man, so super volcano at the California Nevada border moving. We go over here to the far east and again, this one, another spot, lone earthquake out next to Area 51. Rachel, Nevada. But really, we're next to Goblin Knobs and the Lunar Craters. So there's a volcanic complex. There's Area 51 to the west of here. This earth earthquake, several kilometers down below in the crust. Got some houses there. Here are the Lunar Craters. So if I'm going to lean towards it being something, it's likely related to the Lunar Craters. Didn't mean to hit the microphone there again. I need to move this away from my face. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Lunar craters, and that's a lava flow that comes off of an old butte. So these are older. This was formed a long time ago. And then a younger flow broke out the side of it. Think of Kilauea. What just happened to Kilauea? A younger flow came out the side of the older volcano. And that's what's going on here, but it's a giant lava field that goes down to the Goblin Knobs, which are just older versions of lunar craters. So lunar craters are the younger ones. And goblin knobs are the older ones. That's where the earthquake is. Directly at it. What about the other lone quake down here? Just to the south of the supervolcano, right at the California-Nevada border. Silver Peak, Nevada. Paste those coordinates and look it up. Man, what a day today is. I'm telling you guys. I don't forecast eruptions. But when I see seismic activity taking place around the volcanoes, I have to tell you, look where we are on this. We're on the side of Yubihibi Craters. We're on the south side of the volcano, the super volcano way up here. But really, we're right next to the Yubihibi Craters. I always look within 40, 40 miles. Because the magma chamber can shift by many, many miles over the course of a long period of time. The plate will move and the magma chamber will shift. They'll separate or stretch out. This is just 17 miles. So definitely close enough. And Yubihibi craters are huge. That's a crater. Look at that. Down in the ground. That's not a that's not a peak. You know, again, you look at it from the side, you can see its depth. Oh, hello, Wednesday. Come. Come hither. As we go down to the south, Wednesday, we're gonna go look at some volcanoes down here in the Owens Valley. We're going to start up here next to Kozo Volcanic Field where they're generating power at another substation and geothermal power plant where they drilled in to get steam. And we're going to go down here to the east-southeast, darling. And we're going to end up down here at Lava Mountains. So we go from one set of volcanoes down to another and one power generating station and down here to the south at Lava Mountains is where they're expending power. Military test range. Let me show you. We start with the earthquakes up here on the north side of this volcanic field called Kozo Volcanic Field. You can read the Smithsonian on it. Well, you can't read the Smithsonian on it, but I'll read it for you. It's an old volcanic field from the Ice Age Wednesday. Now, we go down to Devil's Kitchen, and here we have geothermal turbines where they drilled into another volcanic field. The line of earthquakes goes east by southeast down to the Lava Mountains where I said there's military test range, and there really is. the rocket test range, military test ranges all the way across here. And I showed them yesterday. Here, let's see if I can find one. The rocket site. Let's see if I can... Yeah, this is where we were yesterday, right here. Where they do the blasts, they'll hook up a rocket in there and see if it burns out fully. The bunkers that are in here and all that good stuff. Okay. That's where we are. So a line of quakes. But the number of quakes here, super low. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. You could have called these two 12 and 13. 13 earthquakes. 
We've seen hundreds go on here in a day's time. So the flow has been cut off up here to the north. And it's like a line going across the California-Nevada border, going over to Monterey Bay. The flow has been cut off. You see where the flow is right now. Central California. We would expect a break between the two. Okay? As we go further down to the south, down in Southern California, the east portion of the LA Basin started to move. Going right up to my warned area that did not get hit this past week. Flop out. Belly flop. Total bomb out. Got it wrong. I issued a warning here down in Southern California on the San Andreas for up to 5.5. And nothing hit. Zero. I mean, well, zeros, ones, and twos. So next to nothing, seismically speaking, struck. Instead, the energy went over to Colorado and struck with a four in Colorado and a four or near four in Kansas. A swarm of threes in Kansas. So energy went out on the edge of the Craytown over to the east. And I struck out down here in Southern California. But the flow to Southern California has been cut off. So it's all zeros, ones, and twos. Or actually just zeros and ones. And then we get down to Mexico and we got a two. How many twos are in here? Like one, two down in Southern California. One. That's low. The number of earthquakes is low. The amplitude or magnitude behind these also low. I want to go see where they are though. San Gabriel, California. 9 kilometer depth, down below northeast LA. Again, we just got to go see what's there. There could be an oil pumping operation there, or it could just be on the fault. But if there's an oil pumping operation there, that'll make a difference. It'll mean that the man-made pump points are getting struck. I just got to check and see. Okay, it's far enough away. Hold on. Unless there's one here I don't know. South Pasadena or something in here. So there's no pumping ops right here. Let's go check the faults. Famous last words. Wednesday just told me there was. Come on. Come here. This cat, I swear. This cat is the best cat in the world. 20 years old. Almost 21. Yeah, okay. We are. We are directly on... Is that the San Gabriel, Gabriel fault? It looks like it is. Let's just go in and see. Coming in through here. Northeast LA. Let's turn on our topographic map. Street map, satellite, view, and compare. Northeast LA, right along. Yeah, you know what? It's got to be. That's got to be. So right up in here. It's probably not called the San Gabriel Fault, though. Does it matter? I, I should try to find it. I really should. Oh, no, it is. Hey, it was a good guess. That was a guess. San Gabriel Fault Zone. Honor Rancho section. Rancho section. Okay, one earthquake on the fault down in northeast LA. Again, like I said, that's low. The rest are going along the San Andreas, and we branch off around both sides of the San Andreas now. This is the only change that I can really see in the past week. That the east side of the Salton Sea... Look at the spacing on this. 1.5, 1.3, 1.2, 1 1.2, 1 1.4. And the spacing is virtually perfect all the way down the east side. So let's show you the east side of the San Andreas east of Salton Sea to see how this is making that bend around Salton Sea. Do you see the thick red line? Normally, the flow goes right down across the San Jacinto, path of least resistance. But it's going around the outside edge in the past day. The whole San Andreas has shifted down to the south, but only on a one basis. Ones all the way across, 24 hours time, from L.A. all the way down to Mexico. Now once we get to the east side, east-southeast side of Salton Sea, we're at volcanoes and geothermal pumping operations. There's a volcano down at southeast side of Salton Sea called Salton Buttes. Down here where the 1.4 is, geothermal drill point. Down here where the 2.5 is in Mexico. Another volcano called Cerro Prieto Volcano in a geothermal drill point there. Let me show them all to you. Starting east-southeast of Salton Sea, here's the Salton Buttes, marked by the Smithsonian. And on the side of the Salton Buttes, all the drill points, geothermal to get steam to turn the turbines to provide electricity. Sound familiar? It's like the 10th place I've shown you that's doing this. 
Now we go from the volcanoes and the geothermal drill points down next to Westmoreland, where there's another set of geothermal drill points. And the pipelines that go out to all the drill points are around here. Then we go down to Mexico, right across the border, and here's Cerro Prieto Volcano. And it too has been exploited for geothermal by the Mexican. And here's their geothermal field with all their drill points, taking it back to the turbines to provide the power. And we have a hot spot there to top it all off right now. Wait, let's just make sure. We have a hot spot right there. Are these like solar farms or something? No, 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 that's all fields. Right across the border, looks like we got more geothermal. Warren H. Brock Reservoir. I don't know. Don't want to make about all that. A hot spot right there on the Mexico side of the border. <sighs> this could turn into a really long update now. I have to go look up the hot spots, see what's going on out there. California, Mexico. Let's go in on a sub-regional sector view of Southern California as a whole. Ah, uh, that's not going to show it. Let's go to a localized sector view right down here in Mexico. That's not going to show it. Okay, let's go to a localized sector view of the border. There, that's going to show it. And we need to turn on shortwave infrared. And now, I'm going to tell you something. I've noticed, I think they may have changed the shortwave feed, guys, to omit those beams that we were seeing. It looks a little cloudy, doesn't it? It doesn't look as high resolution as it used to, right? It looks like they adjusted the bands, maybe. Oh, yeah, look at our hotspots down there. They're flickering on and off like a little Christmas tree. On both sides. What's this over here on the east side? This is in the Sonoran Desert. Hold on. We have a hot spot down here too. Right down here in the desert. What is all this? I don't know. Some kind of farming going on out there. Okay, well, it's on the edge of the Sonoran Desert, which is really just on the edge of Piñacate, which are the hundreds of volcanoes that are littered across this volcanic field. Look at all of them. And look at the younger ones. These are the younger and the older. Look how many there are. Those are all volcanoes and lava flows out in the middle of the Sonoran Desert. And just west of there, we have our hot spot there and a hot spot up here right along the border. Two hot spots. All of a sudden, on a clear day. Let's make sure it's a clear day before we say that you know, I mean, somebody will try and tell me it's like caused by a storm or something. No, completely clear day. Hundred percent clear. Let's go turn back on our shortwave infrared. Just see if there's anything else across the state. Gotta look. There might be. There might not be. Who knows? Only the shadow knows. Who knows? The secrets in the hearts of men or whatever. All right, where are we? We are, well, we have a little hot spot starting to appear in the east side of the valley right now. Right up here. I need to go zoom in really close on the northeast side of the valley. Yeah, yeah, right here. Watch right here at the center of the screen. It just appears right in the last frame, right there. I might not even be on Google Earth yet. Let's go see. Nope. No current hotspots marked across the east side of the valley at all. The last one that I have marked here is from September 10th. Nothing. Okay, well, when it refreshes, we should get some kind of hotspot signature out here over in the east part of the valley marked on Google Earth because a little speck is showing up there today on a clear day. Amazing. Hotspot in the east part of the valley. Let's go up to the north part of California. See if there's anything going on up there. Again, where there's one, there's more. Now this to me right here is interesting. Hold on. Look at that. Hot fog. Hot steam. Hot fog. East of Monterey Bay in the valley this morning. That's like a steamy fog and just vaporizes off. But it's dark. It's warm. We got to go see what's there east of Monterey Bay. Were there, was there an earthquake there? Oh man, look. Guys, look. Look where our earthquakes are. And this hot spot right here. 
hot fog or hot steam. East of Monterey Bay. I got to go see if there's anything of significance up there. Right in here. Ah, look at this. A lake of some kind. What is this place called? The San Luis Reservoir Recreational Area. Showing up as warmer with some kind of fog or steam above it right next to the San Andreas. That's what it is. That's what that is. Right there. And then whew, vaporizes off. Wow. Well, it's warmer than the area around it. I don't know what to make of that. Other than it's warmer than the area around it enough to show up as something that drew my eye to it. Now let's look across Northern California. See what's going on there. We have some hot spots starting to develop in the valley again around Sutter Buttes. Just one right now. And it looks like this morning there was also some kind of warmer fog that was in the area that vaporized off right there at the last second. Let's go see and show you what's there. Here are the Sutter Buttes. These are marked by the Smithsonian. And around the Sutter Buttes, we have these that go into the side of the volcano all the way around it, all of these. I think that's geothermal. But there might be oil and gas mixed in with that. It goes down into the fields here. And it goes, it skips a little bit. And then up here, we got another cluster of them up here. And that's where this new little flickering hotspot's showing up, which is just now showing up in the last frame right there. It's the tiniest little thing. But it's showing up. Let's go up to the north and look in Oregon. Oh, wow, we got several hotspots across Oregon right now. Here's this morning. And then, poof, right there. Three, one, two, three. And this hotspot is coming up up in central Oregon. We could probably even determine where the location is in Oregon really quick by turning on the county lines. Let's do that. County lines. It's right on the county. Oh, this should be pretty easy to find. Look at the stair step of the county line there and that black dot that just appears there suddenly. Let's go see what's there. There might be something of significance there. Like I said, should be easy to find. It's in Central Oregon, stair step pattern on the second stair step up of the county line. Oh, look. Google's refreshed and it's got the most current hotspot right there. What do we have here? Nothing. Do we have any power lines around the area that I need to be aware of? Any kind of power generating station that needs to be brought to light? I don't see anything like that. Oh wait, over here we got huge power lines. Huge. One, two, three sets of towers. Wait, four sets of towers. One, two, three, four. Four sets of towers and power lines going right next to the area. Now, how many miles is that away? Ten miles away. Like, I've talked about looking within a couple miles, but ten miles seems far enough away that it wouldn't be related unless it's somehow electromagnetically going into the crust. We're right next to an airstrip of some kind, but that looks pretty rural in its own right. Just a random hotspot out here in the middle of nowhere? What's this? Okay, just a clear cut. Nothing. Nothing of any significance around the whole area. Let's back it out and see if there's anything else. We're to the east of a volcanic butte called Black Butte and Blue Lake Crater. These are all lava flows. If you want to see something impressive, all these are lava flows. Going back to Belknap Knoll. Yeah, that's not forest fire. Those are all lava flows. And yeah. We're just to the east of there. But I don't have any volcanoes marked here at all. If you guys know of anything around here, around Prineville, please let me know. I mean, volcanically speaking. Or electrical. What if there's some kind of power plant here that I'm just missing? In which case, there could be enough energy generated then to put into the crust to cause a hot spot come up 10 miles away. But as I see it right now, I don't see much of anything there. 
Somebody will be like, that's where the nuke plant is, Dutch. <laughs> like, does Oregon have nuclear power plants? I don't think they do. The only way to find out would be to look that up, but we're not going to bother that right now. Let's turn off the counties and go up into Washington. See if we have any hotspots up in Washington. Nothing. Nothing in Washington, just in Oregon and California. Are there any across the rest of the plate? Let's go see the New Madrid Seismic Zone. Nothing. I guess all the farmers just stopped burning their fields. Ah, <laughs> uh, there's nothing. Now we go down into the south, into the southern states, and I haven't checked that in weeks, but let's just take a quick look. Looks like Georgia might have a few. We do. We've got one, two. Louisiana. Louisiana has a few clusters flickering on and off right through here, through the river valley. Talk about a lack of hot spots. Okay, that's good. I mean, it's not like we want to see them. But now that just wraps it up then. Then we have hot spots that are going on across the west coast at a time where the whole Pacific plate is going into overdrive. And let's just go back to the start of the update, which is Kilauea's eruption. I wonder if there's video. Kilauea eruption. Let's just see. Oh, wow. Wow. Look at that, guys. That's like a current shot. Oh, should we go back over to the Hawaii Volcano Observatory and just see if they've got any kind of video of this? Kilauea Volcano Updates. Red warning. Kilauea Maps Quality Summit Photos and Video. December 21st, 2020. Wow! Wow! Dawn arrives at Kilauea Summit, where scientists are monitoring the new eruption with Kilauea Caldera since December 20th. Three fissure vents on the wall of Le Mau Mau Crater have fed lava into a growing lava lake. Dude. Oh, man, this person's loving it. You know, when I rip on the USGS, I'm never ripping on a person like this. I'm always talking about an egghead in Washington, D.C., okay? Just let's get that straight. Even if I'm ripping on the Hawaii Volcano Observatory, I'm just ripping on a theoretical, non-existent person, persona of an institution. Never on the person that's actually there. That's got to be the coolest job in the world, for crying, crying out loud. Okay. So it's flowing lava down into the center of the crater. We will get some video out of this. Let's go look at the Air Quality Tracker, a non-government website. Uh-oh. Thurston Lava Tube? It's called Thurston? Hey, how often do you use the word, the name Thurston? How often do you hear the name Thurston? Because last night, I was joking around about being stuck on an island with Bill Gates and that I would be the professor and who's going to be Gilligan and then I said Bill Gates would be on the island and he'd be Thurston Howell the... Right? And I was joking around. I said, hey, Thurston, blah, 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 blah. And we were joking around in chat. I, that's just too weird. I, I mean, Thurston is not exactly a name you, <laughs> you readily are saying on a daily basis. That's freaky. Okay. So we have CO2, SO2, trace amount emissions and other gases also mixed in with that. I'm not shocked by that. Let's just click on this and get a greater view. Is that, is that the biggest we're going to get on this? Okay, that's the biggest. Let's go to the original. This is the original. Amazing stuff going on there. Okay, well, you know what? I don't need to see a video, although there probably are videos. They're probably recorded by private individuals, which then it would be a copyright violation. I can't really show that anyway. Do you have an earthquake plan? You know, I say this all the time, and, and whether you know me or don't know me, whether you like me or you don't, I'm going to tell you whether you're a troll or a lover or a hater or whatever, please take the time to have an earthquake plan. And maybe, if you're open-minded, you should start to maybe look into some of the stuff that I put out over the last 10 years. 
about the relation between earthquakes across distances and fulcrum points and seismic swarms that show up before volcanic eruptions take place. This isn't me beating my chest, although I probably could get away with it. I'd feel a little guilty afterwards if I was. But who else is going to get on here and tell you that I warned for this and caught total hell for the last year? Man, they went off on me hard. And I mean, they really made it difficult for me. And they said I was trying to scare the people in Hawaii. You remember this. You can go back and watch my videos from a year ago. Direct accusations from people who made videos saying that I was trying to scare the people in Hawaii to get views and to make money. And I had to remind them that I was doing the best I've ever done financially before Hawaii ever even took place. I don't need to get those kind of views. I'll get them just fine doing what I do regularly. So trying to scare the people in Hawaii? Really? Like, come on, man. I don't live there. I don't know anybody who lives there. And I'm not trying to scare anybody. It's something that we're observing. Seismic taking place around the volcano that increased. And when an increase takes place around a volcano, I would encourage all of you to pay attention to it and to monitor it until it decreases. There's no reason not to. And that is a proper double negative to use. So take the time to develop an emergency kit and an earthquake plan. Because you may need it. And if you don't use the emergency kit for an earthquake, you might end up using it for severe weather, fire or flood evacuation, maybe even just a power outage. You can go and fumble for your emergency kit, get the batteries out. If you lose your car keys, you can act actually have an extra set of car keys or house keys in your emergency kit. You'll end up using it for other stuff besides an earthquake. But the point is, is to have the emergency kit somewhere where you can get to it easily. So buy a door that you might have to go out. Don't go file this emergency kit away into a back closet somewhere where you might not be able to get to it. Okay? Time now, 1.48 p.m. Kilauea has erupted. Within a year and nine months, let's say, almost two years, of the collapse. USGS said they thought it would be years, plural, many years. I said I thought it would be about a year. And here we are. Just under two years, or just at two years, and boom, it blows. 30,000 foot high, lava tube erupted, or is exploded out with fountains of lava, filling it back up. I don't know if, I don't think it will fill it back up all the way, although it could. It could fill it up like a lake being fed by a spring. Or it could be that that flow just takes place until the pressure is relieved. But now we know pressure was building. Hence the 4.0 earthquakes around the big island up at Mauna Loa and Mauna Kea. Aloha, guys! Aloha! Hey, you need it? You need somebody to come on out? I better. I'll, I'll have to take a boat. I'm not. I'm no way. Am I getting on an airplane, man? You know, I'll be just in the news. Ah, uh, lone lone fatality from airplane crash. Does sense, right? You know, that's not. No way. You're getting me on a plane out there. And if I'm taking a boat, we're we're going through the warm waters and we're bringing extra lifeboats. But I could come out and visit you out in Hawaii. We'll wait a little bit. How about that? We'll let all this blow over, no pun intended. And then we will come out and say hi to everybody. So you guys are great. Word up and much love. I'll save this as a video and we will put it back out over on YouTube to watch back at a later date. Much love, guys. People are saying there are pics of the blast. That there are pics. So let me go and see if I can find them. Hold on. Oh, wow. Okay, hold on. You guys ready? Dang. Are you ready? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, and people are telling me it wasn't an LOL moment. Yeah, nobody got hurt. Nobody got hurt. Nobody had to evacuate. It is a total LOL moment. Man, it is egg on the face. Egg on the face of the professionals. Here's the vent filling up the lake. 
But look at this. Look at the blast. Dude! Come on, everybody. Say it along with me. You ready? One, two, three. Boom! There it is. Sound effects and everything. Let's click on the original. Dang. Wow. Oh yes, this 3.0 swarm means absolutely nothing, the USGS says two weeks ago. Oh, Dutch Sense is just trying to scare people for views. Burr, burr, burr. Well. Wow. S I'm going to save this one. We're, we're saving this. Save image as Killa Uea. Killa Uea exists. Yeah, yeah, we're going to replace that. Wow. Amazing stuff going on there. That's huge. I'm glad we got to see that. Thanks for telling me, guys. Thank you for telling me. We will be back if anything else goes down. Peace out.